Now what I have in my simple lab is the following. I have a Windows machine, which is my Active Directory server. The DNS domain name and Active Directory name is netup.local. I also have a MacBook that runs VMware Fusion. This is the place where I will run my simulator. And I have a Linux machine. The network is 192.168.4.0. Windows and Linux will function as my clients. That will get storage space from the simulator. My Mac is just sort of my access point, but all machines, including the simulator, will be able to connect to one another. The simulator can be downloaded from the My Support website at NetApp. It's downloadable for free. You will need an account to log into NetApp, though. So let's have a look at it. Now, before we start, there's something else which is pretty important in the lab setup. The simulator offers four network interfaces, but you can add two more, and we will do that. The first two interfaces, however, should be set to private or host only. This is automatically done, so you don't have to think about that. We will need those interfaces later. We are not going to use them for data traffic. All the other interfaces should be set to bridged. If you do not set the interfaces to bridged but leave them at the default, which is NAT, meaning Network Address Translation, then you will not be able to connect from clients to your simulator. Your simulator will be able to connect to the outside world, but not vice versa. So you have to set these interfaces to bridged. So, summary, we're going to create two additional interfaces. So in total, we will have four data interfaces, and all four data interfaces should be set to bridged. So first of all, I'm going to create a directory structure on my Seagate drive to uh, host all of the files that I'm going to download and work from. So I go to Seagate, in my case, and I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to call the folder Lab Environment. Then in that folder I'll create a folder for Node 1, which is, obviously I'm going to call it Node 1. I'm going to store my virtual machine in that folder. Then I'm going to create a second folder that I'm going to be using later on in the training for the second node that I'm going to add to my single node cluster. So my environment is set up and I will start a browser and we'll go to mysupport.netapp.com and I will sign in. Then I go to the download section and I select product evaluation because that's where the simulator is and I select data on tap simulator then I scroll down to the bottom of the page and agree to the license and terms and conditions and press continue now I'm not going to download the installation guide I could do that and read it but I'm not going to do that right now also I'm not going to download the licenses I'll do that later as well when we need them and, but I am going to download the simulator, not for ESX, but for VMware Workstation, Player and Fusion. So I will download the correct simulator, which is for my Fusion environment. So when I click on it, it will start downloading and it's 903 megabytes. I uh, select the lab environment directory as the location and it will start downloading. What I can do is I can view it in, uh, in the folder itself and see that it is downloading. So I simply wait until it's finished. And when the download is complete, I will have that OVF file, which I will have to extract. I see it's almost one gigabyte of space that it takes. And when I look at it in a terminal window um, and I list my directories, so I go to the Seagate lab environment and do a listing. And what I see is I have that OVF file. I have to extract it, and on Unix I can do that with tar. So it's compressed, so Z means decompress, X means extract, and F is obviously the file that you want to extract. So I've extracted it, and I do a listing again, and I see I have my files. Uh, this is the collection that I'm going to use, and I'm going to use that particular OVF file that it has extracted from the zipped tar file. 
So that's the file that I will need in Fusion. So let's start Fusion. So I will import the OVF file. So I run import, then I choose the file, and the file is that OVF file of 8 kilobytes. I open it and I continue. Now it asks me where do you want to place it and now I will place it in node 1 which is the first node of my cluster. So this is the location of that virtual machine. So it starts importing the virtual machine and once it's imported I have a look at the settings and I see that my networking is private to my Mac and private to my Mac, which is the first two interfaces, and the other two are shared with my Mac, which is network address translation. We don't want that, so we have to change that. So we go to the settings and we will change. We don't touch the first one, just check it and we see it's private to my Mac, which is okay, because this is going to be my cluster interconnect later on. Then uh, the second one is also private to my Mac. I don't touch it. Then I go to the third one and it says it is um, uh, shared with my Mac. And I don't want that. I change that to bridge networking and I set it to auto detect. So it will find out which of the interfaces, physical ports, it's going to use to connect to the outside world. And the outside world can connect to my physical port as well. Uh, so I do that for the second. Uh, interface as well. Then I'm going to add two more devices and both will be bridged like we agreed. So I set it to bridged and add the last device. Also set that to bridged. And we're done with the devices. So now we can boot our virtual machine for the first time. So we boot our VM and I'm going to enlarge the screen a little bit so it's more readable for us and it tells us that we should type control C if we like. You have to do that otherwise it will, will come into a boot loop because it doesn't have its disks initialized yet. So you have to initialize the disks. So you simply press control C then it says the boot menu will be available and once that's there, I can select number four, which says clean configuration and initialize all disks. We have to do that only once, okay? So we press four and it asks us, it checks whether we're sure and we have to be very sure because you will lose all the data on the drives if you would have data on the drives. But we have no data so we can initialize all of the disks and it will start to reboot for a wipe config. Uh, again, I press enter to continue the boot, so I don't have to wait for 15 seconds, and it says wipe filer procedure requested. So it will start initializing all of the drives, which basically means zeroing the disks. Once it's done that, these disks can be used to store our data. So in real life, this will take a little bit longer, so I speed, I speed up the video a little bit. So it says you should have auto support configured because then we can help you if you have problems. We agree to that. We simply say yes. Then I have to specify the node management port, which is the third interface, which is the bridge, the first bridged interface. And we give it address 99 in our subnet. And we say the net mask is class C. We specify any gateway we like. We're not going to be using that gateway anyway, but we specify it. Then it says you can continue using the browser, but we're going to stay in the command line and press enter to complete cluster setup using the command line. Do you want to create a new cluster or join? Of course we want to create a new cluster. Then is this going to be single node, yes or no? And let's say yes. So we're going to create a single node cluster. Then it will ask us for the administrator password. So we enter the administrator password twice then the cluster name. Let's call it cluster1. Then it will start creating the cluster. That will take some time because it has to start all of the demons. So the services will be started in the background, system startup, and all the other stuff that it will need to, to run the cluster software is started at this point. Again, I speed up the video a little bit. 
then we can add an additional license key. We're not going to do that. Um, then it also asks for the management port. How do you want to manage your cluster? Via which port? We are not going to do that via A. We're going to do that via C. So, and the address would be 98. The netmask again. Then the DNS domain name that we'll be using is netapp.local. And the name server IP address is my Windows server, which is the Active Directory domain controller and also the DNS server. So in my environment, I use 247 as the DNS server and AD server. Um, then I have to enter a location, let's say somewhere in the Netherlands, and I'm able to log in. So I log in as admin, enter the password, and I have my cluster all set up. So there's cluster one, node one, health is true, eligibility is true as well, and we're done. I was logged in as admin, but I can also log in as admin using a browser. So I just want to show you, we're not going to be using this all of the time, but every now and then we will have a look at what you can do in that browser. So we connect to the cluster management port from a browser and it says it's not secure. Well, we don't care about that. So we type admin and we type the password and then we sign in and we get to see the dashboard. Uh, as you can see, I'm logged in as admin and I see the number of nodes. I've got exactly one node and the node is called cluster1-01 and the node is online, which is nice. Also, we have some additional things that we can uh, start to configure the storage, the network. We're not going to do all that now. What we do is we know that it's there and we can go to it at any time and we sign out and we leave the system manager. Oh, that's a lot of windows.